What is going on out there, YouTube? John back again. Sorry it's been a while on the Blu-ray update front, but uh, it's been a crazy cup, been a crazy last month or so. But finally got a couple of new Blu-rays in. You're actually going to be seeing another Spotlight review coming up shortly after this, but I feel that both of these movies need their own independent review. Um, after this, hopefully we'll be getting some more stuff out there. I got a lot of new stuff in that I'm really, really delving into, the special features wise and stuff like that, but I'll tell you, save the titles for you when those videos come out. But without further ado, we are going to finally, finally review the limited edition 2k restoration of creep show 2 from aero video one of the best blu-rays so far released this year but before we talk about the picture quality audio quality supplementals let's just talk about my experiences and what i like about the movie so much so basically the thing is creep show 2 is just models itself after the original creep show it is an anthology style film it has three stories instead of five and, you know, the results are still good. You know, the only thing about the movie is that it's a lot darker than the original. Like, there was a little bit of satire element in the original Creep Show, which a lot of people loved, which I loved. And, you know, the comic book element was really there. Like, they had uh, impositions of the co uh, the comic cover while you were watching the movie and everything. This one doesn't really go for that. You know, this one is more of a straightforward horror film. Now, that doesn't hurt it in any way, but it's still a really good movie. Now, the stories you have, of course, are Old Chief Woodenhead, then you have The Raft, and then you have The Hitch hiker and of course it's all tied with the wraparound story with Billy now my favorite story is always gonna and this is everyone's favorite story of course is the raft you know it just has the one of the best special effects some of the best kill scenes you know the acting is actually pretty good from the cast you know like from Daniel Beer and Paige Hanna you know those are that's really good acting from them now a lot of people would like to say that The Hitchhiker is their second favorite part, but I actually like Old Chief Woodenhead a little bit more. Now, I like Old Chief Woodenhead because that one is easily out of the three the best acted out of all three stories. Because you got Dorothy Lamore, you've got George Kennedy, and then you have you know a young up-and-coming performance from uh, Holt McCallaghy. And he was actually, he did later films, like he was in Fight Club. Uh, he had that one show on FX called Lights Out. He was in The Losers. You know, this was like his very, very first movie. And for years, I had no idea it was him. I was very shocked to find out that was him because, you know, he played the part of looking like a Native American very, very well. You know, but, hey, the makeup technicians did a good job. He got a deep tan, wore a good black wig, and, you know, he fooled a lot of people, including me, for most of my life. So, but... I, like, I just like that story just because of the, um, you know, just be strictly because of the acting. Now, when it comes to The Hitchhiker, while I do like that story, it's a little bit more drawn out. You know, it does have some good scares. It does have good acting. But I don't know why I just haven't liked that one the most. But I will tell you the one thing about it is the music in that always scares the crap out of me. Like, every time I'm done watching Creepshow 2, I have a hard time going to sleep because that music's always etched in my head. And it's just the creepiest music ever. So Rick Wakeman uh, helped do the score on this movie. So he did a really good job on the on the music for that. But uh, anyway, you know, that's just it, you know. But the thing is with Creepshow 2, I've always, always loved this movie. I actually saw Creepshow 2 before I saw Creepshow. Uh, back in, uh, you see, I grew up in Chicago. We used to have a station called uh, WGBO. It was Channel 66. And they were like, if you imagine watching Weird Al Yankovic's UHF, you know, and the type of station that he ran, that was literally the type of UHF station we had here in Chicago. I mean, this thing, this station aired like nothing but Old Mama's Family reruns, maybe a couple of Old Mr. Ed reruns, a couple of Bewitched reruns. They didn't even have their, their own original programming. They couldn't even get licensed really good movies, for God's sake. I think the only movies they were even allowed to air were from the New World Library. And that's how I first saw uh, Creepshow 2 and a lot of other movies from the New World Library. But yeah, you know, that was always a movie that me and my dad loved to watch. Me and my dad always watched the original Creepshow insanely. You know, and over time, Creepshow 2 has gotten a lot more respect. You know, but still... You know, it's not it's not going to be the original creep show. It, but on its own, it's still a good movie in its own right. Um, regarding the production of this, a lot of people don't know is that there were actually five stories planned uh, versus the three that actually made it to screen uh, due to budgetary constraints because the movie was only shot for three million. Um, two of the stories, one was Pinfall, which never got filmed, and then the other was Cat from Hell, which eventually made its way over to the Tales from the Dark Side of the movie, so. But the cool folks at Arrow have given you a comic book here, which which actually has an illustrated comic of uh, Pinfall, so I haven't read it yet. I will check it out, but anyway. Uh, on to the home video, History of Creepshow 2, and this is where I want to really want to get into the nitty-gritty. Um, of course, it wouldn't be a laser, you know, it wouldn't be a Blu-ray update review. No, of course I didn't pull this out. Yeah, I got Creepshow 2 on Laserdisc. I've had this one for a little while, but it's one I've been wanting to check out. Now, Creepshow 2 has always been in print over the years. You know, it's never fallen out of print. It's when it when New World went up, went belly up, 
uh, Star Maker slash RNG video, bought the rights to all the New World stuff, and if you went to a Kmart sometime back in the 90s, chances are you saw Creepshow 2 sitting on the sitting on the tape shelf. And then after RNG uh, merged with uh, Video Treasures, um, they became Anchor Bay Entertainment, and then Anchor Bay released uh, their own DVD, which was really, really good for its time. It came out sometime in like 99, 2000, and then eventually we ended up getting the uh, Divimax edition, which had a better, a better restoration, so to speak, and you know that one had a little bit more supplemental material materials had a lot of uh, bonus material on there and everything uh, but then after that we ended up getting this one weird blu-ray from image entertainment now it looked okay it may repurpose that divimax transfer but nobody really knows <clears throat> i never owned it I, I had a friend of mine who had it we watched it at his house and i thought it looked okay but let me tell you once you watch this sucker that image uh that image blu-ray is going to go straight out of your mind because uh yeah this sucker they did it right uh, 2K scan from the original Interpositive, beautiful looking transfer, great audio. Uh, onto the transfer though, that's the one thing I want to discuss is the transfer. Now, there was a, a lot of discussion in the Blu-ray.com forums about the framing of this film, about, you know, how it's a little open than it has been on other transfers. Well, the one thing I decided to do for comparison's sake was before I made my own judgments, was I whipped out the Laserdisc. Now, if you go on Laserdisc database, they have Creepshow 2 listed as open mat, which means, you know, of course, the movie was shot square, but then cropped on the top and bottom for widescreen. So obviously you would, you know, you would see where the crop points are. Well, the thing is, that's actually not the case because if you compare the images, you are actually seeing more on the left and right of the image on this Blu-ray than you are on the Laserdisc. And then same thing with the uh, DVD. I did end up getting a copy of the DVD from a friend of mine and we did, you know, comparisons. And yes, there is actually more on the left and right and it doesn't hinder the framing at all. Actually, I prefer this framing. It looks a lot better. It just looks more open. There's more room to breathe. And it's, according to the top and bottom, nothing feels compressed. Nothing feels tightly squeezed in. It just feels natural whenever you're watching this transfer. It feels so good watching it knowing, hey, this is probably the way it was supposed to be filmed. Now, like I said, regarding the transfer itself, it is one beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Arrow did such a phenomenal job with this transfer. I mean, there is film grain left and right. There is a lot of fine detail, but there are certain scenes, mainly transition scenes, to where the quality does take a slight dip. But overall, the, the quality is really good. The colors are nice and bright. On the original Blu-ray, they were very muted. They're very, very dark. This has been nice and brightened up. It looks like it's been given so much new life. It just looks amazing. Uh, one thing on a couple of scenes you will see, especially in the raft, I caught it twice, was um, where they were where they did the telecine scan or telecine scan, uh, where Pancho is getting his foot or leg grabbed by the blob in the raft. If you freeze frame, there is actually on this side of the screen uh, a bit of the film frame. You can actually see like the actual frame. It's only at last for like a second, but you know, that wasn't the fault of Arrow. That's like, that's the materials they had to work with. You know, that just shows that they went from the original film frame. But other than that little thing, it still looked good nonetheless. I mean, I'm telling you, this, this blows every Creepshow 2 edition out of the freaking water. It's done. Uh, regarding the audio quality, now there are three different audio tracks in here. There is a 2.0 mono track. There is a 2.0 stereo. These are both LPCM. These are not DTS-HD. But then you also have a DTS-HD 5.1 track, which I probably will never listen to because this movie was originally shot in mono and that's the way you're supposed to see it. And I did watch it in mono in the home theater. And from what I can tell you, it sounds great. Again, it's a front heavy mix, absolutely no surrounds, but everything is clear, everything is detailed, everything's audible, the music sounds great, there are no dropouts, it sounds sounds really, really good, so you're safe on that. Now regarding the supplements here, man, the supplements are really, really good. Uh, for those who have had the Divimax DVD, everything's been ported over, minus the still galleries, okay? Like, there is a still gallery here, but there are other pictures on the Divimax DVD that did not make their way over here. Other than that, everything else has been ported over. Regarding new supplements here, we have the new interview with George A. Romero, which is really, really informative, talks about the production of Creepshow 2, how he was involved. We have a brand new interview with Daniel Beer, talks about his experiences while he was making the raft. We have a brand new interview. Oh, God. It's on the back. I had it in the back with... Uh, Oh, man, I'm hurting myself here. <laughs> the guy who played the hip, I just, Tom Wright, there we go. I, I didn't even have to look. I just remember that off the top of my head. Uh, there was a brand new interview with Tom Wright regarding how he did, you know, how he was a, a stuntman who was getting beginning into his first acting break by doing Creepshow 2. And 
like I said, we have the original commentary from uh, Michael Gornick and Perry Martin that was originally on the Divimax DVD, and that is a great, great commentary. I've listened to that one several times when I had the Divimax DVD. It is a very, very informative commentary. Um, Nightmares in Foam Rubber, that's another featurette that was on the original Anchor Bay DVD, uh, so that one's been carried over. Uh, you have the Easter egg that was actually carried over from the Divimax DVD, My Friend Rick, which is just a little two-minute interview with Howard Berger talking about how he wanted to... Uh, what is it? Talking about how he wanted to mentor after Rick Baker doing the movies. Um, you got the original. You got two trailers. You've got the TV spot. And you got a new collector's booklet with new writings. And of course, you've got the Pinfall comic, which basically just talks about, you know, this is just the illustrated story of Pinfall that was never filmed. But at least, like I said, it's illustrated, unlike it was before. So, uh, final thoughts on this release. Is this End All Tell All Creep Show 2? Of course it is. This is it. Like, old DVD, gone. Old Blu-ray, gone. This is the one you should be tracking down. Unfortunately, guys, um, this particular edition is sold out. Uh, there was only 3,000 of these made. I think Arrow may have made a couple more just to fill some orders because Amazon uh, ended up overselling their uh, their stock. And a lot of people got mad. And, uh, yeah, they. Uh, I think they pressed a couple more so they could get them out there to people. But as it stands, this edition is out of print. Currently going for about you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks on eBay right now. But the good news is there is a standard edition of this. It has the exact same supplemental material. You're just not getting this hard box or you're not getting the comic book. But the disc contents are exactly the same. So either way, go check it out. Go pick it up. It's on sale for a good price on Amazon. Check it out anywhere you want. But I give this my highest, highest recommendation. Go check it out. Stay tuned for the next review. Keep it spinning. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.